if you were to be killed in the line of duty, would you say that you died serving your country, your community, and you died doing something that you love? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think of that because I have... Can you stop it, that, please? is also a deputy, so we think about it on both sides. However, we are deputy U.S. Marshals. If we are called and we have to put ourselves to assist in a situation, we're gonna do it. We have our badge, we took an oath. Although when you take that oath, you're not volunteering to die. Is it a possibility? Yes. However, you prepare and you train to minimize that possibility. Now this is, y'all can't give me, I gotta be tough, so you can't give me like tearing up and stuff. You gotta take all that out. I couldn't have asked for a better father for my kids. You know, it is difficult to be in this line of work and um, see things in the way that you see them when you deal with the kinds of things we deal with on a daily basis. But, you know, if I think about going home to any other profession, a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer, a fitness, anything, um, they don't possess that thing. My class supervisor, he's now a chief, Miguel Santiago, made that chant. I remember seeing the chant. I remember wanting to say the chant. The tradition of that we finish strong, that we take care of each other that we say family and that we mean family, and the faster they get that, Told you I wanted to. Um, come together as a team, um, they feel it. I feel like on their dark days, that's why they know that no one's ever alone. He would, you know, push them in a way to be able to handle whatever life threw at them while they were in this job. And um, as far as our girls go, we, prepare them now, as crazy as it sounds, at 10 and 8 years old, um, so that at 16 or 18 or 24, they have um, what they need to be able to protect themselves and to defend themselves. And I, I refer to it as making uh, stepping stones out of stumbling blocks. You know, um, and one thing I always like to instill in these kids was like, have the will to survive. Have the will to survive. Even if you don't make it home, don't let it be because you didn't have the will to survive. Come on, man! Fight for control of it! You're the good one! Go! Go! You might have noticed I've been referring to the candidates, or now deputies, as kids. And much like a parental figure, we teach and guide them along this journey. Kids are always eager to prove themselves. They like to seek approval and want to make their parents proud. For me, there's a big difference in coming into work each day to teach a candidate versus coming in each day to teach my kids. My kids are now Deputy U.S. Marshals, and it's time for them to leave the nest and forge their own way. But know that you will always be my kids, and I will always be there if you need me. Because as you know, a parent will do anything and will always be there for their kids. You can't do the kind of work that the Marshal Service uh, embodies without unifying as a family. You know, my kids will always know the significance of this agency on our family and um, the significance of us being where we are today and having the life that we have and living in the way that we live. We're going to be around regardless of the obstacles that get in our way. And I think most of them, well, all deputy U.S. Marshals, we have that. It's that warrior mentality. We're coming home tonight. I'm putting my babies to sleep.